fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> In the early days of the western United States, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order. In a few sections of the new territory, he found able sheriffs to assist him. But for the most part, he fought alone against overwhelming odds. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Council City! Hell, Silver, away! shack several miles from Concho City was the home of Jug Daggett, his wife Hetty, and the thin, undernourished boy of 16, whom they called their son. Jug was known to the district as a drunkard, a bully, and a petty thief. His wife, pale and silent, lived in constant fear of her husband. And the boy, Billy, knew little but harsh commands and worked too much for his strength. One afternoon... Jug, lurching to his feet, roared at his wife. Where's that no good kid? Why ain't he back from town? What's that wild pup to? Didn't you hear me, you sniveling fool? I, I heard you, Jug. Then answer up when I'm talking to you. Jug, the boy ain't been gone hardly an hour yet. So, now you're going to argue with me, huh? Think you're going to give me some of your lip, huh? I, I didn't mean... I'll that. show folks around here who's oh, boss... Jug. Please, you're hurting my shoulder. Get out from underfoot. Oh, gee, oh, boy, oh, there. Oh, so there is. A fine time to be showing up. Jug, what are you going to do with that whip? Watch and you'll see. No, Jug, no. Leave the boy be. He never... Will did. you get out of my way? Please, please, Jug. One of these days you'll kill the boy. And serve him right. Where you been? I, I hurried back, Pa. Honest, I did. Don't you lie to me. You took your time a purpose. Well, I came I'll right teach to... you to take advantage when I send you to town. Don't hit me, please Where's don't. Where's that whiskey I sent you for? Well, I couldn't get it. Mr. Phelps said you'd have to pay him what you owe him first. So, you take an hour to get to town and back and don't even fetch what I sent you for. Well... I couldn't help it. You're getting more worthless all the time. Come on, Chief. Hold on. I got unsaddled. Come here. You're you're going to hit me? I'll give you a lick and you'll remember till the day you die. Oh, don't. Don't Stand hit me. Stand still. Please, please don't hit me, please. Yeah. Oh, oh, don't. Stand still, Blaster. Oh. I'll tie you to the snubbing pole. Hey. Get him, Chief. Go after him, boy. 
boy. Quiet the coyote, Sam. You ain't going to hit me. Get him, Chief. Get him. Stand back. Hey, he'll trample me. You've hit me for the last time. I ain't going to stand it no more. I hope he does trample you. Chief hates you just like I do. Get up, Chief. Get him, boy. Blast him. I'll kill the critter. Go on, Chief. I'll show him a thing or two. Go ahead, Chief. Jump on me, will you? Drop that whip. What the? A mess, man. Drop that whip before I use it on you. What's that you said? I'll take that. No, you don't. No, I'll drop it. There. Good for you, masked man. You listen Why, to... you meddling polecat. I'll break you in two for that. Come ahead. I'll show you. Leave him. No, leave him to me, Tonto. Take that. Oh. oh. A lot more? You was just lucky. I'm winning. This time I'll fix. Oh. She knocked him down, mister. She knocked him down. Oh, you hit him plenty hard. If you're not satisfied, get to your feet. You'll pay for that. Hey. Watch out. Don't throw. You asked for it. I warned you. No. Busted my hand. I didn't. But if I had, it wouldn't have been more than you deserve. Now, clear out. Don't. Don't shoot again. On your way. You'll be sorry for this. One moment. Well? I've heard about you before, Jug. I've heard about the way you treat your wife and son. What business is that of yours? I'll give you some advice. You're likely planning on getting even with them after Tonto and I are gone. If you are, don't. We won't be gone so far, we can't return. Harm either one of them... And I'll make this county too hot to hold you. You'll just tend to your own affairs and leave me be. Gee, stranger, you sure can hit. And that draw of yours, boy, that was just about the fastest I ever seen. Did he hurt you, son? Oh, taint nothing. Only I guess if you hadn't come, he'd have tanned me good. Gosh, how'd you get here without us seeing you? Well, Tonto and I saw what was going on from the road. We left our mounts on the other side of the house so we wouldn't give warning of our approach. Oh, your name's Billy, isn't it? Uh-huh. Think you could remember something, Billy? Oh, sure I could, stranger. Tonto and I have a camp not far from here. And don't bother to look for it, you won't find it. But if either you or your mother need help... Yeah? Signal us. We'll come at once. You... You mean if Pa gets... Gets mean again? Yes. Well, he will, all right, stranger. He won't forget what happened and he'll blame me for it. Well, but how'll I signal you? Well, let's see. You probably wouldn't have time to build a fire... You don't pack a gun. I'll tell you what I could do. Yes? Pa keeps a spare gun hit on the top shelf of the cupboard. It's always loaded, too. I could signal you with that. Fire three shots. You'll be able to hear them? We will. Here, Silver. Here's Scout. Uh, stranger. Yes, Billy? Are are you and Tonto wanted by the law real bad? We are not wanted at all. Oh, but you're wearing a mask. For reasons of my own. Here, boy. Hip. Uh, uh. Honest to gosh, you ain't crooks? No, Billy. Why? <laughs> well, because, well, I think you're swell. And I sure wouldn't want the law to get you. Adios. Come on, Silver. Hit him up. Come on, Silver. Come on. The place where the Lone Ranger and Tonto had made camp was less than a mile from Daggett Shack. It could only be reached through a maze of dry arroyo, however. It would have been impossible to find unless one knew the trail beforehand. When they reached camp, they drew rein, but the masked man did not dismount. Oh, oh, there's a whip scout. Oh, what? Oh, oh. Me, me cook grub. Eat if you're hungry, Kimosabe. I'm riding on. Huh? What do? I've been thinking over what just happened. Ah. Tonto like boy. Father, him no good. I saw the woman watching us from a window while we were there. Uh, Me see her too. I wonder if you noticed what I did. What that? Billy didn't resemble either one. Not in any way. That boy has good stuff in him, Tonto. If it were allowed to develop. Uh, what do you think? They're not the people who should have the authority to raise a youngster like that. It's not fair to him. Uh, you're right. I'm calling on the sheriff. I'd like to know more about Jug's past. It's possible he'll suggest a way to take Billy out of Jug's hands. Oh, you not right to town. They're danger. I'll have to do it, Tonto. And me right, too. We promised Billy protection. One of us must stay here in case he signals. But you Don't can't... worry, Kimasabi. It'll be dark by the time I reach Concho. I'll be on guard. And if possible, I'll get the sheriff where he's alone. No, you not take chance. I won't. You have my word. And while I'm gone, uh-huh. be alert for a signal. Sooner or later, a jug will break out again. Oh, uh, me listen. Good. I'll see you later. You hurry. Come on, Silver. Come on. <laughs>
Bob Roper, the sheriff of Concho City, was an unusual man for the position. Young, wealthy, and well-educated, he had chosen to be a lawman because of a tragedy that had struck his family while he was still a boy, leaving him with a burning hatred for criminals. Early that evening, he rode the link of Concho City's main street, keeping a watchful eye on the town's bustling activity. At the end of the street, he reined up, stopping where the night shadows met the lights cast from the numerous cafes. Whoa. Whoa there. Oh, boy. Plenty going on in town. Plenty of chances for trouble. I'd better stick around. Who said that? I did. Where are you? I'm here in these trees, Sheriff. Right over here, out of the light. Whoa. Whoa there. Whoa. Who are you? I think you've heard of me, Bob. I want to know who At least we're both fighting for the same thing. Well, you're masked. Wait. Get your hands up. Hold it. There's no need to slap leather. I'm not an outlaw. Don't try to tell me that. Or is there a law against wearing a mask? Now, you've got the drop on me. What are you after? Information. What information? Concerning Jug Daggett, his son, his wife. Why? Because I've taken an interest in the boy. Because I'm convinced the boy should be given a new home. You're lying. Careful. No crook would want information for a reason like that. What's behind this? I've told you the truth. You a friend of Jug's? No. An enemy? I never saw him before this afternoon. Well, gun or no gun, you get no information from me until I hear straight talk. Now, let's have it. What's your game? I... What the... Steady, Silver, steady. There, old fellow, we got him. What was it? A snake. Your horse disturbed him. You got him at the very first shot, and with only moonlight to shoot by. A lucky shot. And you called your horse Silver. Right. Do you travel with an Indian named Natchi? I have an Indian friend, but his name is Tonto. You gave the right answer. Let me look at the cartridges in that gun. Take it. Silver. I said I thought you'd heard of me. The Lone Ranger. Yes. Lone Ranger, for ten years I've hoped to meet you. And when I do, I must take you for an outlaw. I've heard of you, too, many times. You have? You brought the law to Concho City. You couldn't do that without getting a reputation. I'll be a lawman as long as there's an outlaw alive that needs jailing. I wondered about that. Wondered? When your father died, he left you the largest ranch in the region. You could have managed the ranch, or sold it, and taken life easy. You didn't either. You ran for sheriff, put a foreman in charge of your property. That's right. Why? Your pay is poor. The work is dangerous. Why should you choose this sort of a life? Because it was time we had a sheriff around here that could enforce law and order. I see. Oh, I'm not bragging. There's plenty of other good men in the county, but none of them would take the job. They had their ranches, and they figured they could protect them. They figured they didn't need any help from a sheriff. It was you who put an end to rustling. My first job was to get everybody working together. When all the honest men in the district are united, then a crook doesn't stand a chance. Paul told me that. Those were almost his last words. Did you promise your father to run for sheriff? No, not exactly. But I thought about it a lot. And that's the only way I figured I could get the job done. Satisfied? You've answered my question, but I'm still wondering. What about? From the way you talk, you sound as if you're fighting for more than law and order. I am. I'm getting even. For what? For what the outlaws around here did to my family. Your mother and father? Once there was four of us. You mean that you had a sister or a brother that was killed by... Not killed. Or maybe he was. We never found him anyway. A brother? Yeah. I had a brother kidnapped before he was a year old. I know it killed my mother. My father searched for the boy right up to the day he died. And found no clue to his disappearance? Nothing. But one thing is sure, Lone Ranger. Yes? If I ever meet the man or men responsible, Lord help him. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. That same evening, Hetty Daggett lay sleepless on her bed. Judge Daggett had failed to appear since his encounter with the Lone Ranger. Billy had retired to his own small room, divided from hers by a flimsy partition. It seemed to Hetty as she lay there, her eyes wide open and fixed blankly upon the ceiling, that it must be almost morning. In reality, however, when finally she arose and slipped a wrapper around her thin shoulders, it was scarcely midnight. She moved quietly toward the door of Billy's room. Billy? Billy? That you, Ma? Were you sleeping? Some, Ma. What's the matter? I, I've got to talk to you, Billy. Gee, Ma, you sound funny. That masked man. Huh? That masked man was here this afternoon. One made Jug leave your be. You, you don't know who he is, do you? Gosh, no. Did, did you like him? Oh, golly. When I'm full grown, I want to be just like him. Was you watching, Ma? Did you see how slick he grabbed his shooting iron? Quillikers. Faster than you could wink almost. Listen, Billy. Huh? Just move over a bit so that I can sit down. I, I've got to talk to you. Sure. <clears throat> you, you won't tell Jug about this, will you, Billy? Well, of course not, Ma. What is it? It's something I've been thinking about for a long, long time. It, it's something terrible that happened once that I've thought and thought about till sometimes I was afraid I'd go clean out of my head. Well, was it something you done, Ma? No, Billy. Something done by somebody else. Something I didn't know about at the time, but, but I found out after. A long time after. And ever since, it's been on my mind something awful. Gee. And now I just can't stand it no longer. But, but I don't know who to tell. Well, can't you tell me, Ma? Not, not just yet. It'd have to be somebody else. Sheriff Roper, why don't you tell him? Oh, I couldn't, Billy. You, you wouldn't understand. Huh? Sometimes, son, when, when you've loved somebody a terrible lot, even when you find out he's bad and mean and he's done things he should be made to pay for, why, well, you just don't have the heart to make him do it. You're talking so funny, Ma. I, I thought maybe I could tell that masked man about it and... And the law wouldn't have to know. Why, sure you can. Could you find him? No, but I know how to make him come here. You do, Billy? Shucks. We got signals fixed up between us and everything. You just sit right there and I'll go say... Hey, you scheming brat. Pa! Oh. Double cross a little sneak. You won't get me. Hey, what the... Your ass man will fix you. Why, oh, you blasted whelp. You're harder to lay hands on than a yellow liver coyote. I'll show you. What are you doing? You'll see. What... <laughs> it ain't here. Hey, you bet it ain't there. You took it away. Talk it signal the mass man, huh? Thought I didn't hear the scheme you fixed up, you blabbing sneak. That gun's right here in my belt. Stay away from me. Come here. Let go. No. Oh, you're twisting my arm. Oh, Pick please, Pick up let that go. can at your feet there. I can't. Pick it up. I got it. Don't twist my arm. Please. Please, let Get go. Get back in your room. Oh, Jill, you're going to you will stay in there, too. Just let the boy go. He ain't harmed you. Do anything you want of me, but let him go. I'll fix up both of you for good and all. Blast you. Leave go. Leave go. No. Kick me, will you? Oh, my head. Oh, what you doing? Look what you've done. You spilled that kerosene all over the floor. Which is just what I aim to do. What do you mean? It means I've stood for all the double cross and blab, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna close your mouths. Neither one of you is going to squeal on me. You just wait till the masked man hears about this. Shut up. I'll get that hombre, too. What do you want to say, Wendell? I'm just seeing that these shutters are still nailed tight. But, but why? I'm sick and tired of your whining. Fed up on you and this whelp always siding again me. Jug, you, you've been drinking. What if I have? You're out of your head, you ain't yourself. What I am is none of your business. Where are you going, Jack? Hey, the kerosene! Don't drop that match or the kerosene will catch a fire! And ain't that just too bad? No, wait, watch out! Get back! No, no, let us hold you! No, no, what you do? The Lone Ranger had returned to camp and told Tonto of his conversation with Bob Roper, Concho City's young sheriff. 
Tonto, that explains why Bob Roper would rather hunt down criminals than manage his property. Mm. And to learn more about Jug Daggett. What that? Jug has always been a petty thief. He was born and raised in this section. He was no good from the start. Uh. A number of the ranchers in this section suspected him of butchering their cattle. And when he could, he sold the hides also. Then catch him? Bob's father did. Oh. But he punished Jug in his own way without turning him over to the law. Whatever it was, Bob never learned. However, it must have been very effective. Bob says Jug left the district at that time and didn't return for almost five years. When he came back, he brought a wife and child with him. Then boy belonged to him. I don't think so. What do you think? I tried to question Bob without letting him suspect what I was getting at. I believe I succeeded. I learned that Jug disappeared at just about the same time the child was kidnapped. You think Jug take him? There's certainly reason to think so. The theft of the child was spite work, not for ransom. No money was ever demanded for the child's return. Oh. And Jug hated Bob's father. Uh. Jug could have taken the child, married that woman in another part of the country, and returned again without anyone suspecting the child hadn't been born while he was gone. In fact, I'm positive that's just what did happen. The woman would have feared Jug too much ever to talk, even if she knew the truth. Not right. That's just the kind of revenge a man of Jug's type would like, to return with a child to the man he felt had injured him and mistreat the child without fear of discovery. Uh, him he bad fella. There's one thing more that makes me think that's what happened. What that? Give Billy the right kind of care, let him fill out a bit, and he'd look enough like young Bob Roper to be his twin. Why other people not see that? They took both of them for granted. They never had reason to suspect Jug wasn't Billy's father, so they never questioned it. Mm. What we do? I'm going to find Jug's wife. I think she can be induced to talk. Uh, and if she can... You look. What? Fire. He glow? That fire's in the direction of Daggett Shack. Uh, Come on. Throw the saddles on and cinch up. We're riding. An hour later, Jug Daggett reined in his lathered horse in front of the cottage where Bob Roper made his home in town. Oh, 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 oh. Hi there, Roper. Open up. Hurry and open up, Sheriff. That's you, Jug. Sheriff, you gotta hurry. Climb in your clothes. What's hurry up. What's the matter with you? You drunk again? No, I ain't drunk. My house is afire. What's that? My wife and boy are both trapped inside. Man, you must be crazy. I ain't crazy. I'm telling you the honest truth. I seen the fire. I heard him yell inside. I tried him to get him out, but I couldn't. Jeff, do something before I go clean crazy. Your wife and Billy were inside that shack? They were, I tell you. And you didn't get them out? I couldn't. I couldn't do a thing. You ought to be strung up to the nearest tree. Come inside. I'll be with you in just ten seconds. Bob dressed as fast as he could, hurried outside, saddled his mount, and raced with Jug toward the shack. It was three hours before the two men returned to Concho City. They were tired and dirty, their clothes covered with ashes. But Jug, in spite of his weariness, was protesting loudly. Why do I have to go to your office with you? Why can't I just find some place to go to sleep and get some rest? Because I want a statement. I'll give it to you tomorrow. You'll give it to me tonight. I've already told you everything I know. You've still got some things to explain. What things? You swore you hid Billy and your wife inside the shack when it was burning. I did? There was no sign of them. You know that. We searched everywhere. The shack burned down, yes. But they weren't in it. Well, I thought they was. And if they weren't there, how did the fire start? You say you were returning from town when you first saw it. I was. Then you couldn't have started it. If they weren't there, they couldn't have. How should I know how it started? That isn't all. Where are they now? Oh, con it, ain't you, Sheriff? Ain't it up to you to figure them things out? If you can't handle your job, say so, and I'll go to somebody who can. I figured to make out all right. Well, here we are. Whoa. Oh, boy. Whoa. Oh, there. Oh. Oh. You can tell me everything you know about this. I'll write it down, then you can sign it. It seems like a lot of blame foolishness to me. Your opinion wasn't asked. Ain't a man got no rights? You've got rights. You've also got obligations. What are you doing with them keys? I'm going to unlock the door, of course. <laughs> it's already unlocked. The door ain't even closed tight. That's funny. I was sure I locked up. Wait till I light this lamp. Hmm. There. Now we'll hey. see... Surprised to see us, Jug? The Lone Ranger. What'd he call you, mister? Never mind that, Billy. I... Stand where you are. Don't hit me. Stand still. 
Well, the next shot will be dead center. No, 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 don't, don't shoot. Come here. Uh, I wasn't running away. It was just you was too running away. You locked me and Ma in the house and you set it afire so as we'd burn. And you was running because you knew I'd tell. Why, are you Is trying? that the truth? It is. Toto and I saw the fire. Rode to the shack and got the boy and the woman out just in time. The place has been saturated with kerosene. It ain't neither. He's saying that just to get me in bed. He's making the whole thing up. Jug, your word against the masked man's isn't worth a thing. I never... Keep an eye on the fellow, Bob. He's guilty of more than setting fire to that check. He knows the game's up. What, what do you mean? Your wife is in the next room resting, Jug. She has no reason to keep your secrets any longer. And I happen to know the whole truth about Billy and who he really is. What is no. that stranger? Jug kidnapped the child from your parents, Bob. Billy here is that child, and I can prove it. She talked. She went to blabbing just like I know she would. I wish she had been burned. I wish she'd burned the kid along with her, the dirty You You rotten snake. Gee, Sheriff, you hit almost as hard as the masked man. He's out cold. Lone Ranger, tell me the truth. Is this boy here my brother? Is he? You heard Jug admit it. Billy. Golly, stranger. I never heard Ma say that. She isn't your mother's son, and she didn't say it. She refused to tell me what I suspected to be the truth because I wouldn't promise not to turn Jug over to the law. Some women are like that, Billy. Loyal no matter what they suffer. I had to trick Jug into admitting the truth. So Jug is the man I was after all the time. And I never knew it. Right. Come, Tonto. Uh, oh, wait. Don't punish the woman, Bob. She had no part in the scheme. I won't. Of course I won't, but I'd now, like... If you want to know why Jug hated your father, Bob, take a look where Jug's shirt has been torn away. Shirt? Good Lord. Branded. Branded front and back. And it's my father's old brand. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>